Oh yeah, this is being live streamed and it's gonna record. Okay, perfect. So we should be live on Facebook. Let me just double check. We are, okay, let me close that Facebook out. Well, welcome everybody. I'm gonna keep admitting people. I don't have my glasses on, so hopefully I'm admitting the right people. Um, I'm happy to be here today with you guys. Uh, Katie and I were talking about some trainings and she was like, can you do a sales training? I'm like, I can, I can do a sales training. I probably need my glasses to read my notes, but maybe not, maybe not. So welcome everybody. I'm Melissa Wheelahan. I um, am a direct to Katie. I lead the team, Team Odyssey Rising. Um, I have 460 people on my team. So we're a pretty big size team. Our team started, I started March 27th um, with Rising Phoenix and um, came over from another boutique, but our team grew really quickly and it seems to just continue to be growing. I got a lot of really great leaders and amazing people on my team. So um, I love selling. Uh, I, I think that, um, I love selling, like I love selling anything, <laughs> but I really love selling boutique clothes, but I feel that one of the areas that, um, I do well is helping people understand how to sell without having the mindset of getting the sale, if that makes sense. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Like how, what are the, the who, what, and why's of selling and um, this might be different information than you've ever heard before or ever considered. So I just want to ask that you stay open to ideas. Um, you can drop uh, things in the chat. I'll have a time after for Q&A. Um, thank you. Kathy's watching the chat and Facebook. So um, just like know that I'm coming from a space of love and grace. And so there might be uh, some things that I say that you might not agree with. And that's okay, because this is our own business and everybody can do it the way they want. But um, when I was really thinking about this on our team, we really talk about transformational selling instead of transactional selling. So on our team, we really talk about adding value for people and not just selling to get a sale. And so when I sat down this morning to make my notes and kind of get my thoughts together, because I tend to ramble and I wanted to make sure I had everything succinct for you, that was the lens from which I was coming from. So um, another just little thing about me, um, I do work full time. I have a full time job. So this is my part time fun thing. I also teach college part time. Um, I am in the education Field. I'm a, I work at our county office of education, and early learning. So I'm in education. I'm a mom of three boys. Well, they're adult children now. So 26, 24, 21. I have a husband and a cat. Um, and uh, I, again, have been here since March. And I started because I wanted a pair of Judy Blues. And I saw Katie post about them. And I'd always wanted to try them. So I bought them and then I loved them and I thought I wanted another pair. So I asked Katie how I could get a discount because I was done doing any kind of uh, you know, say any type of sales. Like I was like done, I have done them. I've been in direct sales one way or another for over 25 years. And so I was just done. I was like, I'm just going to teach college, do my job and just live my life and not do anything else. But then I was like, Oh, I can get a discount every time I shop. Okay. I'll do that. And then wildfire. So we'll just, we'll just get going. Um, okay. So who, so let's talk about the who I do have my notes here for me so that I don't forget. So when you think about who you're selling to, I want you to think about your ideal customer. Um, a lot of times I will see people just want to sell to everybody. And that is probably not the best way to get sales because you really want to narrow in on who are you focusing on because if you're all over the place and you're like, I'm trying to serve the plus size people and I'm trying to serve the over 50 and I'm trying to serve the young millennials and I'm trying to serve the skinny people, like you're just too over all over the place. Every every um, category of person will buy from you, but you need to be very clear in your mind, who are you selling to? And a lot of what I've learned, I've learned over the years, but also I'm a huge fan of Bob Heilig. Um, I listen to his podcast weekly. I am part of his Love, Serve, Grow community. I do a ton of trainings with him. I love his trainings, but he really talks about this ideal customer. And so I really want you to think about who your ideal customer is. It might be you, like you might be your ideal customer, but it might not be you. So for me, my ideal customer is 
me. It is somebody like me. Um, I, uh, as a young mom, I had a mom group of friends and I went to um, a mom's weekend in Palm Springs. I live in Southern California and we went into a boutique shop and I saw this really cute like loungewear outfit. And I said to the lady, oh, I want to try this. And she said, I don't think we have your size. And I was like, oh, okay. It was kind of like the pretty woman moment. You know, I don't think we have your size. And I was devastated. I thought I'm never going to be able to shop boutique. I'm never going to be able to wear cute clothes. I'm going to be stuck wearing frumpy clothes. And so that's kind of like I wore mom jeans, mom, like all the mom stuff, right? Forever. And then um, when I was introduced back into boutique world, I realized that there was a space, there was a place for me and there was sizes that were inclusive of all sizes. And so for me, when I wear the clothes, I feel confident and I feel like I belong. And so for me, a sense of belonging was really important when it came to um, that piece of who I'm serving. So one of the things that I have learned to do is to write what we call an I help statement. And I'm going to share my I help statement with you because this is who I serve. Okay. So I help women shop for clothes that enhance their body shape and size so that they can dress with a sense of belonging and confidence. So every time I post on my VIP page, every time I think about what am I gonna, uh, what kind of content am I gonna put in my VIP page that might be boutique related, it always revolves around that. It revolves around helping women understand how to dress for their shape and size so they can feel a sense of belonging and confident. If it doesn't fit there, I don't post it. So um, that is the, 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 when we're thinking of the who, I really want you to think about that. The other thing I want you to think about is, are you listening to the people you're serving and what they might need from you? So it's really good to ask your group what they need. So if you're running a VIP group or you're just not running a VIP group and you're doing everything in your personal page, asking them what, um, what are you, what do you need? I, I have membership questions. I'm actually going to open up the things so I can also see questions as they come in. Um, I have membership questions in my um, page. Uh, oh, membership questions. Sorry, that was a lag. There we go. Perfect. Um, I have membership questions. So I ask, like, what are you looking for? Work outfits, comfy outfits, um, all of it. I love clothes. And so I kind of can get a sense from that what people are looking for. But every once in a while, I will kind of test the waters out with my group and kind of see what are they feeling? What is it they're needing help with? I don't want to ever make an assumption that that I know what they need. And I always want to listen more because the the best way to serve customers is to listen. We're trained a lot in this business and in and in any type of, I think, direct sales, multi-level marketing company to always talk and to always do. Like we're always told, hey, post this. Hey, say this. Hey, do this. But we never train anybody on listening on how to listen to the customers for what they need. So really important when you're thinking about your who is, are you listening? Do you know what they need? And who are you? Who are you serving, okay? The last really important part of the who is the problem. So I want you, which is gonna lead us into our what, but I want you to think about becoming a problem finder, okay? Not a problem solver, but a problem finder, right? We always talk about what value are you adding? What problem are you solving? But I want you to rethink of that as being a problem finder. When customers have something going on or they need something, what is the problem that they're having? As you are interacting with people on their Facebook pages, and if you're not doing that, you should be doing that. As you're going through friends that are not showing up in your feed, but other places and spending time getting to know people, you can sense what people are going through. Maybe somebody's getting going to a wedding. Maybe somebody's getting ready to go on vacation. Maybe somebody's struggling because they're like, I have white feet and I can't find any shoes and I need shoes for this certain thing. Become a problem finder, right? And that make, means you need to listen. You need to listen for the problem so that then you can help them with the solution. So when we think about what, this was, this was gold. I actually just listened to Bob Heilig's episode 333 yesterday and I shared it with um, our leader group. And he, he talks about um, value versus price. And so I want to share this with you because I just think this is, this is just gold. Okay, so we talk about adding value. 
And people will buy when the value outweighs the price. So I'm going to say that again. People buy when the value outweighs the price. So I want to uh, think about the last time you went to buy something that you're like, I don't know. I don't know if I really can buy that. And you had to go through in your mind what all the reasons were why you would need that item. How many of you have done that? Like thumbs up or thumbs up in the chat if you've done that, right? Why do I need this? Do I really need this? Okay, so my personal example is e-bikes. E-bikes are very expensive but everybody in California has e-bikes. Like we ride them around our neighborhood and my husband and I really wanted e-bikes. And so we went to the e-bike store and we, um, I'm kind of an impulse. I'm a little bit of an impulse shopper. Um, sometimes I shop by emotion. So I get the like value outweighs the price. Cause for me, I'm like, if I, if it brings value, I'm going to buy it. You don't even have to sell me on it. Like if it's cute and looks good, I'm probably going to buy it. But most people are not like that. They need to see how this is going to add value to their life. So we went to look at the e-bikes. Now I'm short, I'm five foot one. Um, and the e-bike there, <laughs> Even the shortest one with the seat all the way down was still a little too big for me. And I was like, ah, I said to the lady, well, what, what do people do? And she said, well, they either go to the kid size bike, which I didn't want a kid size bike, or they go to a different brand. And I was like, but I really want this brand because everybody says this brand is the most functional and does all the things that we wanted the e-bike to do because we go camping. And so we have the different types of terrain that we ride bikes on. And so I was like, okay. I think the value of this e-bike is going to outweigh the price that it's going to cost me. So I said to my husband, but let's make a smart decision. Let's go like leave and then come back the next day. So we went home. We thought about it. When will we use the e-bikes? Will we really ride them around the neighborhood? How often do we go camping that we would ride the e-bikes? Where else would we ride the e-bikes? Right. So we kind of went through this whole process in our mind. And then we thought, you know what, the value it will add, like we're going to get exercise. We're going to, we ride our e-bikes literally everywhere. We ride down the street to go to dinner now, instead of getting in the car, we're like gas is expensive. So the e-bike makes sense. You just plug it into your wall. So the value of the e-bike outweighed the price that it cost. When normally if I had just looked at price, I would have been like, heck no, no way. Those are way too expensive. So when you think about the last thing you bought, think about that. Did the price outweigh um the price outweigh let me see what Janelle, just all think can you give an example of that yeah i'm gonna do that we're gonna we are gonna do that it's in my list of things to do um uh the value that you bring to something needs to outweigh the price okay because this is and this is a quote i found this um okay so warren buffett so this was also in that podcast I listened to warren buffett says price is what you pay and value is what you get and that is so true, right? How many of you also have gone to the store? And I don't know, does anybody drink wine? If you're a wine drinker or anything you're going to buy, right? And um, you're like, well, the more expensive wine must taste better because it's more expensive, right? Than the cheaper wine, the cheaper wine. But that's not necessarily true, right? Just because it's more expensive doesn't mean it's going to be the best thing. So when you're adding value, think about that. People are going to buy the value over the price. It doesn't matter. So when people say to me, oh, I can't sell that item. It's too expensive. I'm like, that is a red light story. That is not true. What is the value of your bringing? Right now with sales, right? Right now, everybody is doing Black Friday sales, right? That's just the nature of the business. It's the nature of the United States right now. Like everybody is doing that. But it's really, and it's really easy for us to get stuck in that, mindset of, oh, they're going to buy it because it's on sale or, oh, they're going to buy it because it's cheaper than where it's somebody else. They might, people will, people will shop by price, but those are not your people that are going to come back and continue to buy from you. I'm, I'm just going to say it. Or they're always going to be the people that are only going to buy something that's on sale. And they're never going to buy those Judy Blues from you at full price because they're waiting for you to say, oh, they're on sale. So you got to build the value. Okay, so bringing, buying the value. You also need to know the people. Again, back to the who, knowing your people. So how can you find out what they value if you're not asking them any questions, right? You don't know what they're valuing. So one of the ways that we do value is by posting items to help people 
see what the value is and also get to know you. And I think, uh, you know, you've probably heard before um, people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And that is true. That is true. But the only way you build trust is through action. Okay. The, you can't just have a relationship with somebody and they trust you. I want you to think about the last time you bought something from somebody who sells in a direct sales or multi-level marketing company. Is that the person you always go to every single time you need something? Maybe, maybe not. Kelly's shaking her head. No, no. Right. So I can have a, I can buy something from my whatever candle person, let's just say, but the next time I see a candle person and I see that there's something I want, I'm just going to go to that person because I haven't built the trust with that person yet. The relationship is important, but relationships then build trust, right? So we want to make sure that we're building trust with people so that when we do post those items that add value, they're going to be like, oh, I trust Melissa. It's about building influence. And it's not a like scammy way or a undermining way. It's truly caring about people to build that relationship to get to the level of trust so that people will buy you. So when I post, when I post the black set today, the lounge room set, people are like, oh my gosh, I need that set because Melissa put the cranberry one on yesterday and showed everybody. And then she had the blue one and I need this because I trust her. She says it's soft and comfy. I trust that she's going to do that. And those repeat customers come because of that level of trust. They're not there because I'm their friend and I'm posting. I don't, you know, I don't post a ton in my VIP group, maybe twice a day, but I'm not like spamming people with messages and spamming people with posts. It's not because I'm in front of them more. It's because I have a relationship and I've built trust with them. And hands down, that is why, that is why I sell the amount that I sell. And that is why I have the amount of repeat customers that I have because I've gotten to that trust level. Okay. So Giselle wants to know about posting value added posts when we think about our clothes. So we're going to, we're going to do that. So I'm going to, we're going to look at some pictures. So I've pulled up a couple of um, things here. Let me move you guys out of the way a little bit. Okay. So we're going to do this together as a little, a little group here. Okay. So here's the baseball hat. Okay. Now here's the baseball hat. What I want you to think about is if this was the item you wanted to post wherever on your personal page, on your wall, what I find most often, and, and a lot of times I, um, I do a lot with my team, if they need it, if they want it, I will always go into their VIP pages, uh, meet with that, go through their VIP page, look at what they're posting, give them feedback on their VIP page and help them understand how to post differently. And then I'll let them in my group for a short period of time so they can kind of see how I'm posting so they can kind of get ideas. This takes practice, right? This is not something that's very natural for people because we have been taught in previous areas and previous businesses, we have been taught in this industry to just post and pray. And our team doesn't teach post and pray. We teach intentional posting that's transformational, that builds value. Um, so when people start doing, here it is, go buy this hat is dropping today. This is cute. Like I am the queen of it's cute and comfy, just buy it. Like that is pretty much my tagline, but I have to, cause I don't understand fabrics. I don't understand. There's a lot I don't understand. So I'm always like, it's cute. It's comfy. Just buy it. But the reason that, that sometimes works for me is because people trust me. But let's take this hat, for example. So we're going to do this hat. This hat is, I don't even care how much it is. It's $20, $26. Okay, great. We're not going to talk about price. But I want you to think about if you wanted to post this hat, Robin, don't give the answer because Robin and I went through the same example yesterday. <laughs> if you wanted to post this hat, how could you add value about this hat without just saying, look at this cute baseball hat that came out today? What would be the problem somebody would have for why they would need this hat? I'm going to give you a minute. You can either unmute, you can put it in the chat. But think about what would the problem be that somebody would have for why they might need this hat? 
bad hair day or baseball games and stuff. Good, it Amber. Can't. Yeah. Yep. Erica's saying, don't want to fix your hair. Yep. Okay. Who has had a bad hair day? Anybody? Anybody had a bad hair day? I had a bad hair day yesterday. I was going to get my hair done yesterday. So I put a baseball hat on. Okay. You've all had bad hair days, right? Oh, yeah. sorry. My bad. I was trying to go a different route with that. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead. I was trying to think out of the box. I go was ahead. Like, I was thinking, you know, well, my kid has alopecia and okay. so she has baldness on her scalp. And I was like, well, if that is like a, um, a Sherpa like hat, it might would be cozy, but I don't know if it's on the inside of the hat or not. Okay, so let's look. Let's look and see. I don't know either. I don't have my glasses on, but yes, it's features a Sherpa like material. I don't know if it's on the inside or not, but that would be easy to find out, right? We could ask that question. You could ask that question in your chat, your team chat. You could uh, ask that in the affiliate page. What does the inside of this hat look like? That is brilliant Kelly and totally outside of the box and what I love about that idea Kelly is that um it will let people be relatable to you that's mm -hmm. not only adding value but it's showing people who you are right but think about how that post looks when I say today is a bad hair day or I'm going to get my hair done today so I've got my hat on today who else has experienced a bad hat day right instead of saying check out this new hat that's in the boutique, go to what's new. Here's my link, right? That is not adding value. That is not adding value. Um, uh, so Kathy says bad hair day or, or adding this accessory. We'll add a pop of color to your outfit. That's a really good one too. Um, I could also think if this is Sherpa like it's super soft. So I might do something like this is probably going to, I can't wait to get this hat. It's going to feel so soft. It's going to be like, I could probably sleep in this hat. Like who else has, you know, who else would sleep in this hat or it's your favorite warm, fuzzy blanket on your head, like something, you know, I sometimes I'm comical in my group, but you kind of, you kind of get the idea. Giselle, does that kind of give you one example? I'm going to do, we're going to do three examples, but does that kind of following me yeah okay let me see what's in the chat if you're on a baseball game you might need this hat to cover your face yes it's baseball season um baseball season or I'm watching my kids game yeah anything that you can relate okay that was an easy one okay let me give you guys a little bit of a harder one there we go we move you guys out of the way okay here comes the next one okay here it is have you guys seen this, by the way? <laughs> okay, when you look at this, the first thing I thought of, my brain, my brain said, oh my God, this jacket is $28. It normally costs 52. And then my brain said, stop. It is not about the price value. It is about the value of what the problem is. Okay, so let's hear it. Let's hear it, you guys. What problem would you be finding with this item? If you don't like a big bulky jacket, maybe. Awesome. I just yeah. ordered the same jacket today. Good. <laughs> and why did you order it, Tamara? Because of that reason. I don't like big bulky jackets. I'm either a vest person or a lighter weight jacket. Perfect. You could do a post like that. You could post this picture and say, I just ordered this today for myself. I like lightweight jackets for whatever reason. I get too hot with warm jackets. I live in California. We never get to wear big bulky jackets. So having, you know, a lightweight jacket for me is good because I can take it all the places. That's adding value to it. What else? Any other ideas? I live in Florida. I'm about to move to Ohio and I don't have any winter clothes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that is also good, right? I live in Florida and it's warmer here and I move into where it's cold and I'm going to need to layer and this is going to be one of my layering, right? Who else has ever moved from sunny weather to winter weather? Who else, like Tamara, who else has the problem with wearing heavy jackets, right? You always want to ask who else has this can you relate, right? Can you relate? Okay, ready? We're going to do one more. Why did I do all sh things Sherpa? I must really want warm, fuzzy something to hang out with. Okay, this is today. This is today. This is beautiful, by the way. I love these colors. Okay, these that colors. is super cute. 
Yeah, it's cute. It's $62. It's a little price, right? It's that might be pricey for somebody, right? But we're not looking at price because we're looking at value, right? Because the value of the item outweighs the price. People will buy when the value outweighs the price. Um, one of the things, and if you've not done this, you should do this. I do this. I'm a numbers person. So I know that my team has an average order of $67 per person. I know that because I track that. And I know that I have like a $74 average order per person. And it's because I don't look at cost. I'm always looking at value. So if we're going to look at this for value. So if you don't know your per person order number, it's very easy. Just take your sales. It sells right in your back office. This is how much you sold, how many sales you've had, divide them, and you get your per person average. Okay, this one. What would we say to this one? Because maybe, you know, what would be the problem somebody might need for this? It's the it. perfect camping jacket who said that erica i need the jacket for camping yes it is the perfect camping jacket yeah easy what else take off and on say it again kelly it's easy to put off and on so like easy maybe a teacher or something where she gets hot just take it off and then if she's cold put it back on perfect perfect you can wear this many ways yeah right Okay, that's adding value. Great for layering on your color days and cute enough to wear to the office as well. Kathy says, yep. Yeah, I'm thinking I could wear this to the office. That was my initial thought when I thought, because I work. So I'm always like, can I wear this to work? If I can wear it to work, it's that adds value over price for me. Okay. So does that, I'm going to stop sharing. Does that kind of help you guys understand a little bit about adding value, right? Think to yourself, when you see something, what is the problem? The other thing is when you're thinking about selling is that you don't have to post everything. Like you guys, we have so much stuff and I think it's amazing. And I know Don is here. I think it's amazing that we only have drops a couple of days a week because it gives me enough stuff to show every day. So you don't have to, if there's, you know, some days there's like 30 pictures in that album and there's like 15 items or whatever, 30, 10 items. You don't want everybody to see every single thing that is dropping because then there's no reason for them to go to your website. Zero reason. So pick one or two things that you like that day or that your customers will like. We just did a training in our team on how to sell the things you don't like. <laughs> like, that's not my style. Oh, I'm not going to share that. So we did a whole training on how to sell the things you don't like, because we want everybody to add value. Because It's not what you like. Remember, it's what your customers need. And it's the problem that you're trying to find. Okay. So that is the what. So we did the who, figuring out your ideal customer, who are you selling to, what, being a problem finder. And I'm going to, that quote again is amazing. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. Um, being intentional. So really when you're, when you're posting or when you're selling and really like having conversations with people is very important. So I have a person who, um, for some reason can never find my links. I don't, I don't know. She can never find my links. So I'm always a messenger with her. Okay. And then I'm like, I gives me an opportunity to help her with other things. Or the other thing about being intentional is if you know, there's a customer who likes something, and again, you have to figure out your own system of how you keep track of certain things. So I um, I literally just have like a notebook. I'm a paper pen person. So I literally just have a notebook and I know that I have a certain customers that were waiting for leggings to come out. So when those Zanana pocket leggings that I actually have on right now dropped, I was like, everybody who needed more leggings, here they are. There they are. Now, if you have a system that you use, like I know Erica uses a customer management system, like, you know, if I use Excel or a piece of paper, like that's what I use. But if you use something like that, um, you can put notes in there and say, this is the person who likes this and then find them. You know, somebody's going to a Christmas party because you've just seen that on their wall and they're your friend and they trust you and you know them and you feel that relationship, I would reach out to them and go, oh my gosh, I see you're going to a Christmas party. I don't know if you've found your dress yet or not, but we have some amazing Christmas dresses. Would you like me to show you? And that is not spammy, right? That goes a long 
way. I have a lady that I buy from, from a particular company, and she knows that I like a certain thing. And every time a new one comes out, she's like, Hey, just letting you know, this came out. Not sure if you want to see it. I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm not offended by that. I don't think that's spammy because she is doing it because she knows I like it. Now, if she started sending me everything, I'd be like, girlfriend, back up the bus. That is too spam, too spam spammy for me, but she knows me. I trust her. That company, I only buy from her. I only buy from her. No matter where, if I see somebody else, I'm, I go to her. Hey, I just saw a post on somebody else. I was in a vendor event. I saw a post. It looks like the such and such is on, is, is up or new sent out. Can you, I'm going to go to your link and buy it. Okay, great. No problem. Because I trust her. Okay. So be intentional. Don't just throw spaghetti on the wall. That is the worst way to, to sell anything. Okay, let me just check the comments really quick, even though I do not have my glasses on. Adding the link to the, okay, so Giselle, do you recommend adding the link to the comments? I suggest adding the link to the comments. And I don't know where I heard this, but somebody said, if you, yes, I don't know where we heard this. Maybe it was, oh, Erica's friend did a training for us on Facebook groups and how to grow your group and doing that, selling through your groups. And she said, if you, if you post a link in your body of your post that takes you out of Facebook, Facebook doesn't like that. That is like Facebook, no, no. So you want to post your link always in the comment. The other reason is you want them to read the other comments, right? So like you want them to see what other people are saying is reading those comments. So I suggest do not put it in the body of the post. I tag my VIP group if it's on my personal page, but I do not suggest, um, my husband keeps calling me and doesn't he know I'm training right now? Okay, hold on. Let's see, what else? Uh, some people want to know where everybody's moving in Ohio. Don't, oh yeah. Don says, a Sherpa for work and play, add to cart. That's cute. Don't drop everything in the what's new. Yeah, pick three of your favorites and go back. Drive traffic to your site with teasers. Yep, perfect. How do you stop team members and not just post all the stock photos and helping them with graphics and stuff? Okay, Giselle, save that question for the end because I will come back and ask and I will answer that. So please remind me if I forget to ask that question. Okay, so let's do the why. So we know who we know who we're serving, we know what we're doing, but why? So why is this important? Why is this important? Repeat customers. That is what I'm going to say. It is important because of repeat customers. I have customers that came with me from the other boutique I was with that are now buying from me here because of that trust, that repeat customers. Um, we all love a good deal, you guys. I, I mean, I, I love a good deal. I love, I mean, who doesn't love a good deal? Like we all love a good deal. But the good deal people are not the people that are going to be your repeat customers. Because again, they're always just looking for that. You need to um, think of it this way. I heard this once um, in like the business world and like the regular professional world. When companies don't take time, and this is actually, I think actually very true in our business as well. And, and our team spends a lot of time and a lot of effort onboarding new people to our team because it takes more effort to onboard and another team member than if we just helped the team member in the beginning, right? So the amount of time that we, if somebody signs and isn't supported and doesn't do anything, it takes a lot longer to then re-get that person going than if you just did it in the first place, right? It's the same with customers. You spend a lot of time, you're spending however much time making your little posts and putting them on your thing to get people to buy from you once. That makes zero sense. That makes zero sense. You want to be posting and building relationships with people so they buy from you over and over and over again. Because why do you want to keep reinventing the wheel every single time something comes out? Don't you automatically want people that are going to come back? I think of like Chick-fil-A. Okay, does anybody like chick I love Chick-fil-A. Does anybody like Chick-fil-A? I don't know. Is that a California thing? I don't know. I would say in and out but you don't have, if you're not in California or there's like three states in and out burgers in, but whatever, Chick-fil-A. Okay, so Chick-fil-A, I don't know what my point is because I'm hungry. So Chick-fil-A sounds good. Think about when I go to Chick-fil-A, I like just keep going back to Chick-fil-A because I know exactly what I want. I know that they're going to have the sauce I like, and now I can buy the sauce in the grocery store. Like I just go back to Chick-fil-A because I can always just go back and get the same thing. And I know that it's going to be fast. I know that I'm going to get in and out and uh, you know I'm going to be good to go, right? In and out of the restaurant and go. So it's the same thing with your customers. You want to build your customers to be lifelong customers. 
That is really important because again, we talked about the beginning. Anybody can go, anybody could go anywhere to any, there's 3000 affiliates. There are oh, 3000, maybe almost 3000. So there are 2,999 other people my customers could buy from. Right. And so I want to make sure that my customers feel nurtured and supported and cared for so that I'm the person that they trust so that they'll continue to buy from me. Right. And that is a really important, important, important piece. So really thinking about how you are nurturing the people you have versus constantly trying to find new people. Now, you do want to be finding new people. But you want to get to the point where you're looking in your back office and when you go down to your orders, it is more other people than you. The goal is to make money, right? I mean, we all want to look cute and have nice clothes, but the goal, Don set this company up for us to make money, to sell clothes and make a commission on sharing cute clothes. It's a super simple business plan. So when I look at my back office and it's Melissa, Melissa, I'm like, oh, good Lord, I am not doing my job right because I need to be reaching out to my customers and nurturing customers. So there's a, there are ways you could do that. Everybody has their own system for that. But I really, really, really highly suggest when somebody orders from you, you're either thanking them in their in their VIP in your VIP page. I actually send a message to them. I send a text message to them. Uh, I have an email. I have their email addresses because now you can see their email addresses right there in your back office instead of clicking on the invoice. I save their email addresses. So I might send an email. It just depends on the person. If I know they're in Facebook all the time, I'll drop them a Facebook message. Thank you so much for your purchase. I'm going to check back with you in a week to make sure you have it. And then you check back with them. You don't tell them you're going to do it and not do it. So whatever system you need for that, that is what's going to build repeat customer. I also want you to think, think of the last thing you bought from somebody in direct sales and did they ever follow up with you to ask you if you got it? Like, be honest. If they did, great. Most of them, no. Think of the last thing you bought. Did they email you or send you a message and say, thank you for your order. I really appreciate it. Maybe. Did they follow back up with you once you got it to see if you had any questions? Or to ask you if you knew? Person. Go ahead, Tamara. I, what? I, I bought some unique and that's the only person that I've ordered from that's ever thanked me or checked up on me to see how I liked it. And I'm yeah. with another sales company as well. And I always check in with my customers and I send them out thank yous in the mail. And, um, I think this training is great because the other company that I'm with, I feel like we're all a bunch of robots because our upline is like telling us post this today and I want you to say this and I want you to do that. And I don't follow that and I do my own thing. And I feel like I have more customers because of that, because yeah. I'm making it more personal with everybody. Yeah, people, thank you for sharing. People need to know who you are, they don't buy, people don't buy from, they, we have great stock images and that's fine. We can post that. If you cannot, if you don't have a lot of items, that's okay. You don't need to have the whole category of clothes to sell. You don't, you do not, you don't need anything to sell here. You just need to be able to build relationships and trust with people and show the value of why they would want that. Dawn curates the, the best things ever for us they're cute so that the people aren't like, oh, that's ugly. Uh, yeah, Don says people can, yeah, they can detect a strip a mile away. I'm always sending messages to my team leaders like, guys, here's a new one I got. This lady's asking me to buy something from her. No name of her company. I have no idea who she is. So I always reply back, I'd love to get to know you first. And that always throws them off. But think about that, that art of handwritten notes. I have a whole um, thing of notes. Handwritten that's what notes. I was wanting to, I wanted to ask when she brought that up. How do we get their mailing address? I mean, is on it in the invoice. back office? It's yeah. on their, how do we get to their invoice? Because I can see who bought and I can see their phone number and I can see um, their email, but I'm kind of new at all this yeah. stuff. And so how do you get there? Where do you yeah. get in the back office? Where do you get that? You click the item, not the invoice number. Oh, and that gives you their address. So yeah, I could it send, pops up. Yeah, I love it. I invoice. love it. Okay. Yeah, click that yeah. invoice number and then it gives you their address. Um, but handwritten notes go a long way. I get handwritten notes from a couple of people, but they go a long way. Whatever fits your style. If you don't like to write handwritten notes or 
I don't, don't live near a post office to buy stamps. I don't know. Then don't do that. But you should be doing something, something. I've just instituted a new texting messaging system. It's called customer connections through text. They're my customers. And that's been super successful for me. I've only been doing it a couple of weeks, but it's really paid off for me. So um, that is the why. So again, building trust and repeat customers. Um, so I would say... Out of all of those things, pick one thing that you want to start with, because when you try to implement everything, you get overwhelmed and you do nothing. OK, so if you're like, think about what you need best, if you already feel like you are you already know who your ideal customer is and you then great, then move on to like, how are you posting and think about that. If you are like, I don't even know who my ideal customer is. I'm just throwing spaghetti on the wall and trying to sell to anybody who will go to my to my link. I get that a lot. I have, I have tried everything and nobody has bought anything. Right. I get that a lot. Our, our leadership team deals with that a lot. We're like, okay, let's start. Step one, who's your customer? Who is your customer? Right. So if you haven't done that, figure that out. If you're like, I know my customer, I feel like I'm posting good, but I might need to tweak it or I might need new people. Maybe you need new people in your VIP group. Maybe you need new friends. Maybe you need to clean out your friends list. Like there's so many things. I am totally willing to help anybody who needs help. Um, that's why, you know, we're a team. And if, you know, even if you're like, I want to do a post, but I don't know, like, does this sound good? Like, I'm sure Katie won't mind. I don't mind in my team, but in case, I'm sure Katie won't mind, but post it in the team page and ask for feedback. I know that that sounds scary, but you guys, the only way we'll learn is if we ask for feedback and ask people to help us stay accountable to those things. So if you're like, I think this might be a good post, what do you guys think? Now, I'm all, I love all the people who make graphics. The girls on my team know that I can make graphics, but I don't choose to spend my time making graphics. And I love all the graphics that we get. And we have some amazing people in this company uh, Alicia and Mindy, Alicia and Molly, who like make graphics a lot and drop them in our thing. And I love those graphics and use those, but make sure you're posting something of value add to that graphic, right? But also know you don't need fancy graphics. Like I hardly have fancy graphics. I literally just post the item. Like, look, I don't have time to get in Canva and make the graphic. I just don't. That's And it's not my gift. I have other things that I would want to spend my time on. But nothing against people who love to make graphics, because I know that that's, that's super appreciated. But when you're using those corporate graphics, make sure that you're putting value to it. Um, I think there are also sprinkle the graphics with a variety of content. Yeah, Don says. There are two different mindsets and I'm just going to share my own mindset. And like I said, I might say something you don't agree with and that's totally okay. It's your business, not mine. Um, and what works for me might not work for you, but there are two different sides of people thinking it's okay to copy and paste somebody's uh, post. And there are people that think it's not okay to post somebody's post. I am of the mindset that I don't ever copy and paste. I usually will change it and I'll ask, Hey, oh my gosh, that was so amazing. Do you mind if I use that as an, a launching board idea? Because we have a lot of people on our team that like post amazing things about the opportunity and amazing things. And you're like, oh, that's so good. Why didn't I think of that? But just make sure you ask somebody before you just fully take their post and move it on. And some people don't care. I don't care. Use the same exact wording. But here's what I want you to do when you think about that. If I post that hat, okay, if... Uh, Kelly posts that hat that says, I'm buying this hat for my daughter because she has alopecia and this is going to make her head feel so nice and smooth with her hair loss. If I post that, people are going to be like, you have a daughter? Without I don't even have a daughter. Like, I would never take Kelly's post, but it would make me think, oh, soft on the head. How could I change that? You know, another one, even if like it's something like, I, ca I can't wait for the holidays to get here. I'm getting my holiday dress. And it's like, the exact same wording, you guys, you all have a lot of the same friends. They all see those posts. And when they see it, oh, Katie posted it. Oh, Erica posted it. Oh, Kelly posted it. Oh, Melissa posted it. They all posted the same thing. That, that diminishes the trust people have with you. And it gets rid of influence. Influence is the best way to have trust because people, they just trust you when you say, you know, do something. Think about when you go to a restaurant. 
right? People aren't going to go to the restaurant if you tell them it's crappy. They're going to go if you tell them it's good. How do you motivate your team members to feel inspired and work with it? Okay, so I'm going to close this part out. Um, and then I am going to stop the, how do I do that? I'm going to stop the live stream. And then I'm going to answer those extra questions that you have, because I could sit here all day and answer questions for whoever wants to, but I don't, I want to honor the time of the people that are on our little Facebook group. So um, pick one thing you want to work on. If you need help, reach out to your upline leader or reach out to Katie or me, or like any of us are willing to help you. Um, and we are here for you guys. So pick one thing you're going to work on and, uh, and do that one thing. And then once you master that one thing, or you get that one thing, then do the next, you do not need to do all of it in one time. You will burn yourself out. And like I said, and do nothing. So just take it in chunks. Like I've got this down and it's okay. It's okay. It's a learning process. We're all doing, um, things at our own pace. Right. And that's totally okay. Everybody's where they're at. So let me stop the live stream.